Hey everybody, so glad that you're back. Buyer's Blueprint. Today I want to talk about what makes up your credit score. Uh, why is this important? Uh, because it will help steer your, your thinking um, and your decision-making paradigm when you're getting into new leases, loans, mortgages, uh, even when you're uh, getting a new credit card, something, anything. It'll, it'll, it'll have you understanding what it, how that decision, that product that you're buying or getting into, will whether it'll be good for your score, bad for your score, short-term effects, long-term effects. Uh, so, um, uh, in general, here it is. Uh, let's give ourselves a big wheel here, and let's divide it into something a little like this. Pac-Man! So, up here you're going to have uh, credit utilization. Uh, um, uh, credit utilization. It's faster than writing it all out. And it's worth about 35 percent of your score uh, and utilization uh, basically well exactly is this it's uh, 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 depending on which credit reporting company you're looking at and how, how they uh, they use this because there's different products right um, I'm digressing but I'll, I'll try to get back on track quick but for example when you go to get a free uh, credit report from let's say Equifax your score will generate let's say it's 650 whatever it will not be the same credit score that, you, that the bank will see when you go in for a car loan. It won't be 650. I've seen it countless times before. The free product is a different product, it's a different model. Um, and uh, and uh, there's, there's around 30 different models and that, that different companies pay for. So for example, there's, um, uh, there's the model that renters pay for, uh, or not renters, uh, uh, people, people who rent out their apartments to people. They wanna check, they wanna check that person's credit and so, they pay for the model that looks at what your predictability would be like on making your rent payments on time. Car companies or banks looking to loan monies on cars will look for the product that will, will guesstimate the, the best, most accurately, what you're likely to do with regards to car payments. So when you go in for a credit, credit report, it, it, it'll give you a score. It'll be you know, pretty accurate, but it won't be the same number as you know, the person looking, you know, or, or insurance companies do the same thing. They'll all get slightly different numbers because it's looking and putting more weight at different things, which I'll get to here. So uh, credit utilization is more of a, a short term thing, which is a car loan thing, because uh, car loans are generally, you know, four, five, six years, whereas mortgages are, you know, 30, 30 years plus, right, in the, in the States. Um, and so down here you have payment history. And that is not necessarily how long you've been reporting for, history, history. That's actually over here. Boom, shakalaka. This is your uh, history here, total history. It's how long you've been. If you've been reporting for 20 years, that's simply just better than being reporting for 10 years, right? Because they have more to look at uh, and they can make, they can say that it's more accurate. Um, someone who's been reporting two months and doesn't know anything on their $500 uh, Visa card, they'll have a great score, but uh, it, it would be better if they'd been reporting for two years and owed nothing on their $500 credit card, if that makes any sense. So uh, payment history is a big one. It's also 35%. And then over here, so they call this one 10% on the history. And I'll do this one last because it bugs me. Uh, and what is this one? Oh, this one's mix. I'll write that down because it's a nice short word, mix. So it's better for you if you have... Um, you know, installment loans, if you've got credit cards, uh, lines of credits, if you've ever had a mortgage or a couple of car payments and even uh, car loans and even a car lease, you know, and they all show up and they all report. Because uh, there is reporting uh, versus non-reporting uh, that will that I'll talk about in a different video. Uh, but depending on where you're at in your credit history life, you might not want to get a car loan that reports or a car lease that reports. You might not because if you do that, your score will go down a little bit in, in the beginning parts of it. Uh, but let's say you got to refi your mortgage in a few months. Well, now all of a sudden, your lender could say, oh, your, your score's taking a big dip. And oh, you know, we're just going to have to just, we'll just have to give you this little bit of a, a rate bump here. And that little bit of a rate bump over the next five years for a whole ton of money on your mortgage will probably cost you more than the car you're leasing or buying. So you have to plan these things ahead and, and know what affects what. So where am I here? So credit utilization, payment history, actual history. And these, this is just simply put, never miss a payment ever. Do whatever it takes to make your minimum payments at all times because that missed payment will stay on your report for as long as that trade line is there. 
which many stayed on forever. Anyway, uh, so there's mix, which I told you about. You need a, a good mix. Here's the history, the actual history, one, two, three, four, five, 10, 20 years plus. And the last one here is, uh, I'm not even gonna do that. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go like this. Collections. I'm gonna put a big sad face there. Um, collections, why I don't like them is because, well, so this is 10% here, right? 10, 10, and the last 10 to make the 100%-ish, right? It's all ballparky, but they say 10%. I say BS because if you get a collection on your, on your uh, report, um, your score is going to go down about 75 points. That's massive because listen, if you've got a 650 score and you get a collection, right? And it'll, and it doesn't matter. It could be on your mortgage, right? For a million dollars or what have you. It could also be for a cell phone bill, a hundred bucks. And what happens then is your score goes down 75 points over a hundred dollar bill. Whoops. And then you go from a 650 score to a 575. And if you've looked at my credit bell curve video, you'll know that generally under 600 score, you're gonna get declined right away. Uh, and if you do end up getting qualified, it'll be at a higher rate with a whole bunch of money down. Um, so I don't know, I, I, I weigh collections more than 10%. Uh, and even paying off a collection doesn't make the 75 points go away. Because as long as that collection stays on, uh, and it'll stay on forever until you pay it. And then even when you pay it, uh, depending on, uh, which uh, country you live in, Canada, United States, and depending on which, um, uh, you know, Equifax, Experian, or, or uh, TransUnion, depending on which, which company it is, they'll, they'll keep it on uh, and show it as paid, but that still dings you. A, because all the creditors can see it. That's bad. Two, two, uh, it'll still ding you around 25 points until that falls off and becomes it disappears off your credit, right? So you'll still, even though you've paid it, it's still costing you month to month 25 points off of your, your, your baseline score. So I think it's, it weighs more than 10%, but you know, here I am, I'm just telling you what I know. So that is that. Uh, do I have everything, any left to, uh, to add? I've gone through that, that, and that. I'm checking my notes and that and that and da, 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 da. yeah no i think we're good so if i've missed anything or if, if you'd like me to cover something in more detail if you've got a specific question i'm totally happy to answer it uh just uh, leave it down below in the comments and um uh, like and subscribe all those good things and i'll see you on the next one guys thanks